Well, it's another warm welcome from the getaway zone. This week we leave Armadale and we head to the beautiful Blue Mountains at the back of Sydney. We pass through Quirindi or Quirindi on our way there and we have a look at the silo art at Quirindi and we actually do an overnighter there and we also drive through Miriwa where we get to see some silo art there as well. That silo art is pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, how do they actually capture that to scale? Obviously spend a lot of time okay. doing it. It's very good. Yeah. A lot of bare silos that would look a lot nicer if they had the silo art on yeah. as well. There's some so we, creative people around. That's we do sure. enjoy the silo art. Uh, while we're at Query Indy, we visited Bob's Shed. Oh, another amazing place. You have got to go to Bob Shed if you're in that area. It's well worth a visit. Yeah. So, full of old style memorabilia, like they've got old shops look set up, you know, with all the old becks and, and all the old products you could buy back in the day. But mostly it's a tribute to Peter Brock and the racing Tiranas of the 1980s. So, for the blokes, if you're into any of that motor racing or, or followed Peter Brock in the day, definitely visit Bob Shed. Was it Rosemary that showed us around? It was, yes. What a character she was. Yeah. She was just a <laughs> she was a wealth of information about every single item in that in she that did. shed. Yeah, she said you know, it was just about it. it was like about what four or five different areas of amazing mm. old gear. Yeah, yeah. very yeah, strange lot of collection, but yeah. really very interesting. Yeah. So we had a nice overnight stop at the uh, Casillas rest area, which is on the Golden Highway, past all those canola fields of gold. And then from there, we traveled, traveled to Lake Wallace at Lithgow. We had four nights at Lake Wallace and then a hip camp at Katoomba for three nights. We spent an entire week at the Blue Mountains. Oh, honestly, the, uh, this country is so special. Mm. It just has the most incredibly beautiful sights yeah. and the Blue Mountains is certainly amongst that. Uh, look, The majestic tall mountains that just, you know, they're, they're really quite incredible, aren't they? The sandstone cliffs yeah. and the gorges, the deep yeah. gorges, they're just massively deep gorges. Yeah. Um, the Three Sisters uh, look all very beautiful uh, viewing areas. Fairly touristy in some parts, which is sort of not our thing, but mm. oh, look, it didn't worry me. It was Definitely just worth seeing. Worth seeing. And mm. So we really did enjoy it, and that then uh, wraps up what this episode was yeah. about. So It went too quick, didn't it? It did. We're, we're now like four weeks down the track from mm. the, the episode you're watching, and um, it seems like a, life, a lifetime ago already. <laughs> Anyway, we hope you enjoy this episode. Bye. Standing underneath the rows of trees, I can see where the ocean meets the sky. Under our clothes, a fire grows. We are ready for this life of running wild. We're running wild. Underneath the rows of trees, I will see you where the ocean meets the sky. Under your toes, a fire grows. You are ready for a different kind of life. You're silent. We leave Armadale en route to Lithgow and drive through the lovely town of Tamworth. Did you know that Tamworth became the first location in Australia to have electric street lighting? This gave the town the title of First Town of Light. I've always remembered Tamworth as being the country music capital of Australia. to have a look at Bob's shed, it's called. So 
We've still got our vans in tow. <laughs> We've come down this little driveway. Fortunately, there's just enough room for the two vans down here. Turning around might be a little bit of fun on the way out, though. Bob's shed at Quirindi is jam-packed full of Australian memorabilia of yesteryear. It's a fascinating place to visit and it brought back many childhood memories growing up in the 70s. Bob has been collecting for some 60 years and we were all astounded and could have stayed there for hours as the place is packed with thousands of historic archives, collectibles and souvenirs. The displays are spotlessly clean and lovingly cared for and beautifully presented. I would suggest that you allow at least two hours. And then we've got Kentucky Fried Chicken Shop. Asian wood. Bob's sister Rosemary was an absolute delight. She took us on a great personal tour and was able to talk to everything that was on display, from the local general store, a recreated old style pub, through to the Holden and Peter Brock world, which included everything about Peter Brock's life. There's your strop. <laughs> Hello. Um, so you've got your spruce and your California poppy. Wow. Way to go, Brock. And well, I hope they they what an amazing tribute to Brock. Is it your shout, Brock? <laughs> your shout, what is it? Brock. Some of these are fetching up to three thousand dollars now. No way. Yeah, because I we had a service station for a few yeah, when my yeah. father left Qantas. We had a mobile gas one. We used to throw the old ones away and fill yeah. up the new ones. Well now the ones with the etching in the glass, especially your rampole and your run. which is pretty much in the middle of town, so it's busy as. Uh, but anyway, they do have caravan parking here, so we have parked slightly outside the caravan parking area so we can get in front of the silos. Like I said, it's in the middle of town. Show here, which starts at 7 p.m. this evening, but there is a bit of work tape here indicating they're working on it, so I'm not sure if it will be on this evening, but we will come down. And Hopefully you'll see that as well.
I'm not sure if you can see these flashes of lightning, but we we're going to go down to the Silo Art Show. Oh, that was a ripper! In about 20 minutes or so, but it's a storm rolling in. And that might be the end of our evening, I think, as far as going down there goes. But anyway, we'll see. It might not rain or it might pass over. Or today's photos might be the only ones we have. On our way from Quirindai to the town of Scone, we passed a point of interest called Faces in the Rock. Apparently, these are the faces in the rock. We left Corindai this morning, uh, passed through the town of Scone and has ma made our way to Miriwa, I think it's pronounced, to look at the Miriwa silo art. And that's what we're here to see now. The Miriwa silo art depicts a couple of sheep on the beautiful canola fields, which we have passed at different times on our way in here. They are beautiful to look at. It's a really great job, quite enjoy this one. Uh, the has little red socks on some of those sheep and apparently that's to do with the Miroir's annual festival of fleeces which started about 30 years ago and, and now they run sheep down the main street as part of the festival wearing the red socks. Hence why it has red socks on there. So these silos have been here since 1963 so 50 years old and the silo art was completed in 2019 so it's fairly recent. At the silos we went into the town of Miriwa itself. Uh, they do have a historical museum there which we were hoping to have a look at um, but unfortunately for some reason it was closed, not sure why. It does say, we did arrive here at 2.30 but it says it closed at 3 but it was already closed so we missed out on that. Just had a bit of a look around the town itself, nice little town. We finished our overnight here at the Casillas Park rest area. I'm very impressed with it actually, it's, a, it's a quite a large area, I'll show you a bit of drone footage. Quite comfortable, uh, you're not far off the highway, only 100 metres, but I didn't hear any road noise after 9 o'clock or so, and I'm a light sleeper as I've mentioned previously, so it was very good. Bit of bird life here which was good for me of course, seen some musk parrots and pardalotes, can hear the pardalotes now, and various other birds. Um, they have some nice toilets here, they are a drop toilet, but they're very clean and very little smell, um, they're quite good actually. Um, there's bins and uh, some water here but not for your tanks or anything, just for washing hands and stuff like that, and a number of covered shaded areas as well for sitting out and having a bit of a picnic or whatever you like. We're just off the Golden Highway, it's referred to as here, which is a uh, aptly named highway. We've seen some beautiful uh, canola farms in the area. Stopped and had a look at a couple of close-up, never really had a look at the canola plant before. And they're a lovely looking um, plant when you're looking at them in, the, in a field. Golden fields, no doubt and the Golden Highway is very aptly named. It's a lovely little view of a valley just from where we are overlooking a, a dam and it looks like a cattle property and all looks very nice. Um, great place for an overnight, fantastic spot for an overnighter and, and you know you could even stay here a couple of nights if you just wanted to chill and do nothing in particular or wander around a bush and look at the birds. Highly recommended. Welcome to Golgong. Narrow little streets here in Golgong. And it's two way. You want to cut that out? It's interesting. Yeah. The town is actually on the $10 note. There's Carolyn in her influential years. 
we've pulled up at Galgong, New South Wales. We've left the uh, overnight stop we had on our way now to Lake Wallace. Uh, about halfway there, well not even halfway there, it's about 40, 50k out of uh, our overnight stop. We've stopped at Galgong, which is the town of the $10 note. So it's the town that appears on the $10 note behind the photo of Henry Lawson who uh, spent much of his life in this area of Mudgee nearby and this area here um, with his family originally doing gold prospecting I think but uh, he was um, obviously known for his poetry anyway we've just we've been up to have a look around the lookout flirtatious lookout it's called uh, maybe very appropriately named I don't know and uh, had a look at the Henry Lawson Historical Society, um, which uh, we, unfortunately, we got there a bit late and only had a half hour there to have a look around, which you could very quickly have a good look in half an hour. Seven dollar entry fee, so that was quite reasonable. You can spend a lot longer there. Reading uh, a lot of informative information about Henry Lawson in his uh, years growing up. Had a very quick look around the town centre as well. Um, and now we're about to take off to Lake Wallace. As we travelled towards Lithgow, we saw the sandstone bluffs of the Blue Mountains and we were looking forward to see them a bit closer. Nestled 10 minutes on the Bathurst side of Lithgow, Lake Wallace at Wallarawang, or Wang as it is affectionately referred to by the locals, is the perfect caravan and camping spot. Lake Wallace is a designated RV friendly campground and is the ideal location to set up camp for a couple of days. Facilities include RV dump point, toilets and showers which are open 24 hours, a playground, barbecue facilities with a great accessible fishing pontoon. Miners one this morning. I'm very quickly going back to bed. The birds are up. And I cannot see the water on the lake. and I still can't see the lake. The sun's struggling to come through. The Lithgow State Mine Heritage Park presents the industrial history of the New South Wales Western Coalfield. The museum has woven stories of the people who were the backbone of the region's mining industry for over 150 years and the tools and the artefacts they used. Learn of the dangers of coal mining and comradeship of miners and their faithful pit horses through the museum's interesting and interactive displays. Mine Heritage Park at Lithgow, uh, looking at some of the history of the coal mining industry in this area and the power station, etc. Yeah, it's really fascinating. Uh, some film footage there as well as museum items, film footage and audio from um, coal mine days. Boy, those old coal miners were a tough old breed. Uh, the way they used to work in the early 1900s and, um, and, and during, you know, war years, etc. It's all very interesting. Hopes were high that we could improve working conditions and make the mine safer. Then it happened. Within weeks, I remember showing up at the pit that Monday and there was a great turmoil. Fire underground. And at $5 a person, it's well worth the, the short drive out of Lithgow area to have a look at it. After visiting the mining heritage site, we've come to the Lithgow Blast Furnace. 
what remains of the blast furnace, uh, which is where they produced pig iron back in the day to help produce Australia's steel, back when we used to have a manufacturing industry, obviously. And this is all that remains. They had the biggest steam engine in Australia here at the time. Hassan's Walls Lookout. Nice little dirt drive up. So that we get rewarded with this beautiful view. We're going to be looking out a window. Look out. Is that the square of the round window? There's a bear in there. Chair as well. There are people with games and stories to tell. Open wide, go Place called Blackfellas Hands, which is Aboriginal art. It's sandstone rocks and things around here, it's just spectacular. It's a bit of a rough old road up, as you can see here, so you certainly wouldn't do it in a conventional vehicle, but uh, fairly easy on a four-wheel drive. Beautiful forest, beautiful.
I feel like we're in New Guinea. Are you sure we can come the right way? So we're walking through this canyon. It is absolutely beautiful. There's ferns and incredible rock formations everywhere. It really is a stunning place. I'm waiting for spiders or goannas. <laughs> Yeah, if the big granite comes running out, don't you all take off and leave the cripple behind. <laughs> We've just finished walking this uh, small canyon walk, which is above where the actual Blackfellow hand paintings are. I don't know if it's got a name, I'm sure it has, I don't know, but gorgeous walk in between all the um, mm. sandstone cliffs and the ferns, lots of bird life which you can hear. I managed to get a lifer, a red-browed tree creeper, which I've never photographed before. Unfortunately, it wasn't very sharp photo, <laughs> but still counts. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a gorgeous walk, uh, quite cool. It's and, beautiful. Yeah, I'm just taking my jumper off. <laughs> yeah, <I> too. <laughs> There, that gives you an idea just <laughs> how big that tree is. The Blackfellas Hands Cave is a unique large rock overhanging shelter located north of Lidsdale and Lithgow. It's a place of cultural significance as it was a meeting place for the Aboriginal tribes of the area. The rock overhang features well-preserved Aboriginal drawings of several hands and weapons painted onto the cave. A short and easy walking trail leads to this cave where visitors can spend time exploring the various drawings and the beautiful natural surroundings. The Portland silos, now known as the Foundations, were the 20th silos to be included in the Australian Silo Art Trail and were completed in May 2018. The old Portland cement works were painted by Guido Van Helton and it depicts five men and one woman who were past Portland cement workers. We left Lake Wallace and travelled up the Great Western Highway to Katoomba. This was quite a steep climb as we were travelling up to over a thousand metres in height and pulling a caravan. So we parked up at our next stop which is the Katoomba and of course first thing we do is look for a visitor centre and we're coming to the Heritage 
visitor centre, uh, or Blue Mountains Heritage Centre it's called, which is located at Blackheath, about 10k from where we're camping. So now we'll go in and have a look around and see what we'll be doing for the next day or two, depending on how long we stay. The Faltinskis. <laughs> oh no, my wife's found something to buy. It's a hat. <laughs> This is the main attraction to the visitor centre apparently. Rob's over getting all the good goss about where we're going. The girls are busy shopping for hats. <laughs> Look out right at the car park, isn't it? Centre and come down to Govett's Lookout. In words, just can't describe this. It is so beautiful. Spectacular. This is Australian's version of the Grand Canyon. can't really see it but through that gap there this is a bit like a T intersection that goes out into a much longer canyon down further. You can see that from the map when we're at the lookout uh, at the um, heritage centre. Let's look out. We took a drive up to Anvil Rock and Perry's Look Down. About a five kilometre drive on a bit of rough old road here and there. The ranger handled it well. Some beautiful scenery along the way looking out across the, the various sandstone cliffs. First stop is Anvil Rock, about a 500 metre walk from the car park. at Lincoln Rock it's called. This is an unusual looking rock isn't it? So this is Lincoln Rock itself. <laughs> this everyone's got their gimbals and phones out. <laughs> Oh, 
to start the rebuilding of life. It's in the 86 and yeah, The roads that lay open are many. When the old one's gone under the knife. And I can feel the sun on my skin. Anvil Rock, and there's the Anvil. <laughs> I thought this cool with their cameras out. Let's see what we're going to do. Anvil Rock. Now heading down to our next lookout, which is Perry's Lookdown. We could see it from Amble Rock just across a bit of a chasm. Only a hundred meter walk from the car park. and are staying at a hip camp oh, just on the outskirts of Katoomba. Um, Blue Mountain Grass Tree I think is the name of the hip camp. I'll put it up on there. It's a nice little spot. You can hear the birds and, and we're here for a few nights to give us a chance to have a look around the whole Katoomba area. It's quite beautiful. I'll show you a little bit of drone footage so you get an idea what it looks like. It's not a large place, it's only a couple of acres. Uh, the owner we met yesterday, Kylan, I think her name was, or Kylan, Kylan. Uh, she was very pleasant, uh, said they don't actually live on the property. They live nearby and uh, they are using the property for a hip camp and um, have seven camping sites here, which aren't too close to each other you can see the other campers and you can see the, the video but it's pretty good it's a very lovely area very bushy bush surroundings got some goats down here in a pen she comes in every evening and feeds them but she's happy for us to take our vegetable scraps down and give them to the goats as well if we want to do that so i think carolyn has already done that nice little area and um Hopefully we'll enjoy the next few days at um, Katoomba. Look at the little goats. <laughs> Hello goaty. Hello. Where are you going? Hey? Where are you going? <laughs> I 
A star is born. Well, something's got to give today. It's a good day today. Yeah, kind of point look at. I think we must be in the middle of tourist season. Did he just tell you? Echo Point Lookout is where you get the best view for the three sisters. And that's what we're traveling to now. Well, that's what we're walking down to have a look at, I should say. to the three sisters. Three sisters. <laughs> There's the naughty crew in the background. <laughs> it's a nice pathway. It's a walking track, not a road. <laughs> it's gonna be a bit of a steep walk back up. It's a bit cool this morning. This is the first day we've had rain. We've had such good weather, but the sun has just popped out and it looks like it's starting to clear so we've had a very windy night wind was howling last night but the good thing about this campsite is that the wind seems to come pretty high over the trees so we didn't sort of have it rocking the van just heard the howling noise and then the rain set in early this morning and there's a few puddles around as you can see and we're packing up ready to go we finished our campsite here and moving on to our next location. We're going through Penrith on our way to the next campsite. Um, but it's been bloody cold and it's probably only three or four degrees. It's not real cold, but just with the wind blowing and the rain has certainly made it very cold. Anyway, we're moving on from the site now. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We now have left Katamba travelling the Great Western Highway towards the western suburbs of Sydney. And it's a bit hairy. It's terrifying. 
Uh, it's it's wet, so it's wet and slippery, and you've got to drive accordingly. And uh, there are a lot of trucks. A big log truck just went past us, and they've got some uh, colourful language, haven't they? Those truckies. Oh, we've, on we've the two-way. We've had to switch the UHF off to do this bit because boy, oh boy, uh, the language this morning is pretty rife. Uh, a lot of swearing going on. <laughs> anyway, um, this bring, that brings this episode to an end. Uh, we finished our time at the Blue Mountains. Beautiful. It, it was really yeah, stunning. It was lovely. Yeah, it, very touristy and, and a lot yeah. of people there, but um, you can see why. You know, it's close to Sydney, an hour and a half, two hour drive, whatever it is. And a lot of people coming up there, tour buses, etc. But it's well worth a look at. Yeah, well worth. Definitely. We don't normally go to the tourist locations, but gee, I'm glad we did. This is the first time I've seen the Blue Mountains, and it was really fantastic. The Three Sisters was the was the first time. Yeah, and they're yeah. all gorgeous, yeah, they're all absolutely very, beautiful, yeah. but the three sisters were, was the highlight, I thought. We're a bit cool this morning. Oh, it's now eight degrees. It was seven. It's warmed <laughs> up a little bit, but um, it's not so bad in the car, of yeah, course. It's quite nice and comfortable in the car. <laughs> but outside, because it's wet and windy out, it's, it really, it's really pretty, cools it down. It's pretty cold. Anyway, we're now heading on to other locations, and I just can't remember the name of them. Ben, ben, <laughs> something or other then yeah we're making our way down towards the coast now so we're getting close to the coast and there will be some coast coast camps this episode i think uh and then so this coming episode and then the episode following that will be kosciuszko national park we're on to ben dealer ben dealer so yeah. we're going to a free camp or six dollar six dollars for the week i'm sure it'll be cold yeah it's basically wombats there so it's some wombats anyway See you guys next episode. Alright. Cheers.